Well, it's been a while, but what's been happening on Piccadilly sidings? Stay tuned and I'll explain all. Well, good morning everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly Sidings. Yes, it's been a little while and so as you probably realise I'm concentrating on the end gauge layout at the moment, but that's the way things are. You know, we switch from one to the other and we do as we please. But uh, the purpose of this video is to give you a bit of a running session and also to update you on some of the stock that's arrived at Christmas. This being one of them. Yes, this is the Hornby Merton, the special edition version. And um, you can see now it's also been sound fitted, just like the green one, which you will also see a bit later on in the video. But there are also one or two other things that have happened to other things that arrived on the layout too. So enjoy, and I'll catch you later. So now you can see there's the bell hack snow plows and they've been weathered up and I couldn't find many pictures of these but the ones that I did find were very heavily faded um, the plow itself was quite 
um, more refreshed with the brighter yellow in both of them. But uh, as you can see, there weren't very many pictures around. So that's my interpretation of that. And also the 66 as well. Um, decided to put this quite heavy weathering on the top here. According to the pictures, there are a number of different pictures out there with it quite early in its life where it was very, very clean. And this was probably slightly later um, after it had been painted. But again, I quite like it like that. The body sides are quite clean on the whole. Um, obviously the bogies do get a little bit dirty, but I like it like that. It's perhaps not to everybody's cup of tea, but uh, you know, that's it's my choice, it's my layout. <laughs> But uh, the purpose of this train is literally just to run back and forth. Um, obviously, it would have been very, very useful a couple of weeks ago. But uh, yeah, on to the next thing. See if you can guess what this is. Susanna, I bet you'll know. Well, there's only one loco that makes a sound like that. And I'm... Well, it had to be the Class 50, didn't it? What else could it have been? Now, if you remember, uh, this loco arrived at Christmas and I'm very, very pleased with it, I have to say. But there was one thing which I was very disappointed with it's, and I dare say half the people who probably got it as well. And that was the livery. Um, the blue, as you probably realise by now, was way off. And the orange wasn't, it was yellow. So I'm gonna bring in the Hatton 66 without the sound on this occasion, and I'll compare it with that. Well, as you can see, it's coming in. And this, is my benchmark and when I put the two side by side they were just worlds apart now one thing I will say about the 66 doesn't have the bright orange that the sit that the 50 has they are different from that point of view I don't know that's something to do with the Europort livery but the blue had to be pretty much the same now although I've not got it identical um, it's a lot more um, compatible, let's put it like that, than it was before. So I'm more than happy with that now. So I'll just take you around and show you a bit more. Right, so what have I done then? Well, clearly repainted it. It's not the greatest repaint in the world, but at the end of the day, 
I'm happy with it. And that's, again, all that matters, to be frank. Um, but I've painted, obviously, the blue and the orange and got some transfers down the side. The red springs that are up here on this one. Now, and also done the um, smoke on the roof. Now, I did look really carefully at the pictures of that. And it did seem that there was this patch across the middle, obviously more around the two exhaust ports and there was a little bit of gloss um, in the middle. The only thing I haven't done with this particular model yet is to fit the snow plows because 4.9 does have snow plows, okay? Um, the transfers, I have to say, um, although they're printed very nicely, I was quite disappointed with them in the sense that they were um, not orange, they were gold. So when I put them on the loco, and I'll show you a picture of that now, you can see that they were vastly different too. So I had to do get my uh, uh, four zero brush out and literally dab with a slightly, not watered down, not thin paint by any means, but um, I had to just literally dab over the logo and the numbers to get them the same colour. And the same thing with the uh, nameplate as well. That was yellow. So again, it's not the greatest job in the world, but, you know, I haven't really got a lot of time to do it. But I'm, I'm more than happy with that. Well, it certainly does satisfy my craving to have a 50 on the layout. Now, you can obviously hear it sound fizzed as well. You probably remember I bought a sound um, decoder at Christmas, TTS one. So just go through the standard sounds that you've probably heard millions of times. I'm not entirely sure what that is, to be honest with you. I can stop it. Lower. It's getting into the habit of just not pressing things again to stop it. It's going to do the sound and that's it. Air release. Whistle. And what else have we got? Oh, some buffering together. Which does Oh, didn't think that wanted to work for a second, but there we go. And Spyrax valves. Which I might turn down a bit, they're a bit loud. But that seems to be, you know, it's basic, but it does the job, and that's the main thing. But this is the sound I got it for. And you might have realised I've put an upgraded speaker from Roads and Rails in here. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. There'll be two more appearing on your screen right now. So do take a look at those right to the very end. And I hope you find those very exciting and inspiring. And I'll catch you again here on Piccadilly Sidings very, very soon. Bye for now.